morning, good morning, good morning. It's Oceanside chat number 12. You're, uh, those of you that hang in here you know every once in a while we do an Oceanside chat. What's an Oceans, Oceanside chat? It's where you direct the conversation. It's where I don't have anything all that compelling on my mind to talk about this morning. But since I promised to come to you every morning, we turn the tables and you bring the questions. So, what do you want to talk about, Noel? Good morning, Penny. Happy belated birthday again. Hello, Alfred. Hello, Melanie. Says right here, Melanie, I can bring you on camera. <laughs> Amy, I can bring you on camera too. Morning, Don. Morning, Kathy. You got a question, Kathy? Good morning, Juliet. Good morning, Shalina. Yeah, this morning I'm on the west end of Hulapoi Beach. And of course, as usual, I'm the only one here. It's kind of crazy. Hello, Alan. Hello, Stuart. Hello, Marcia. Hello, Wayne. I could bring Wayne on camera too. You look healthy lately. Does that, does that mean that I didn't look healthy before? <laughs> ah, I appreciate the compliment. Yeah, I'm down 30 pounds, but I'm plateaued. Uh, and I'm still walking 150 miles a month. So it seems like my body is resisting losing any more weight, wants to hang on to it, even though I'm walking 150 miles a month. I'm still eating good. In fact, uh, two weeks ago, I went vegan not like a you know i'm a vegan but uh well i hit <laughs> dawn uh i'm down here at the end where they can't see me because <laughs> it's not seven o'clock here yet and you can't be on the beach uh i guess until seven but uh so anyway yeah vegan for the last two weeks uh why oh just to change things up and get some maybe toxins out of my body a lot of toxins in me and that's it. Intermittent fasting, I'm doing that, Kathleen. Yep, I'm doing that. Uh, okay, well, hey, enough about me. What about you? What do you guys want to talk about? A lot going on in our world today, right? A lot of drama, a lot of controversy. No shortage of the news. And we talk about how to talk about how, so I, I'm, I suppose you're talking about network marketers new and can't see their blocks uh well melanie that's a coaching conversation and that's a lengthy conversation not one i don't think i could do justice to here on daily dose of salt but suffice to say this the answer melanie lies in your questions the answer lies in your questions so what we tend to want to do when people aren't seeing what we are hopeful they will see is we tend to try to tell them stuff we try to tell them that they're wrong or we try to tell them no look it's this way no look see this see this see this look here look look and that doesn't work but does work what does work is questions so what questions do you ask people well I don't know hello Casey uh, trust your intuition and be inquisitive seek to understand right so you want to be understood you want somebody seeing your your point of view how about you seek to understand them first right so it's almost like uh, if you've studied my training module listening through objections it's almost like that and that's what I'll say about okay favorite books to read besides yours on personal development on business building and personal development well, I'm a fan when it comes to personal development of the classics. I'm not a fan of books like mine, ironically, that are kind of like copycats of everybody else's book. I am a fan of my book, but only for personal bias reasons. Uh, so, like, if I were to steer you to personal development books, I would steer you to The Magic and Believing, The Magic of Thinking Big, um, anything by Og Mandino. Uh, anything by uh, Richard Bach, Jonathan Livingston Seagull, uh, Think and Grow Rich, Wallace Waddles, 
all those classic books. And you know what, folks, you don't need to read lots of books. You know, there could only be one personal development book, Think and Grow Rich, uh, or maybe How to Win Friends and Influence People, those two books right there. And imagine how successful you could be if you mastered those two books, mastered them, meaning you were, you who your, your state of being was a reflection of those two books. I mean, that, that was part of your DNA and you were so immersed in the principles of those books that you could competently teach them to other people. Imagine how that would impact your business. So the idea of you need to read a book a week or a book a month is nonsense. You don't. I mean, if you want to for entertainment, yeah, that's fine. But for personal development, uh, wow, imagine. Okay, I've read a book a week for the last, whatever, two years, okay? So I've read 100 books but can I teach any of them? If I can't teach any of them, it's worthless, it's a waste of time. It's just a big notch in your gun. And so, you know, what? I, I would encourage you to think twice about following the advice of those people that, you know, their badge of honor is how many books they've read. Now, some people have read a ton of books and they can teach a few of them and they are a manifestation of what they've read. But most people read personal development books because somebody told them they should, and they kind of have this idea that the more books they read, the more developed they'll get. And that's not true at all. The more uh, work you do on your development, the more you own the principles of these books, the more developed you'll be. Make sense? Okay, I'm gonna scroll back. What portion of time to new prospects for secure distance and follow up? Oh, Rom Rom Romera, uh, you know, how about, it totally de depends on the size of your team. You know, so if I have 10,000 people on my team, it might be 90-10. If I have 100 people on my team, it might be, you know, 80-20. If I have nobody on my team, it's 100% new prospects, right? So you tell me how big your team is. You tell me what your goals are. Uh, and you tell me how many leadership legs you have wide, like people that you personally enrolled that have built legs, and I can give you a sense of what your percentage of tension needs to be from that. Uh, let's see, how can we pull people out of the hole? Being disappointed after they made a nice start, especially when it... Uh, yeah, well, Alfred, again, that's a long conversation, but uh, try this, right? So the first question I always ask people that we're in a funk or we're thinking about quitting or we're kind of resigned, like disappointed, right? And the first coaching conversation I would ask people is, tell me, Alfred, um, why did you get involved in this opportunity to begin with? What were you looking forward to getting? And then I just take them down to various levels of the iceberg, right? We've talked about this before. The tip of the iceberg is, well, I wanted to travel. And okay, then I take you down to the various levels of motivation. And so where do you want to travel? Why do you want to travel? Who do you want to travel with? And the more specific you get, the more motivated they get. And you just basically are a vision caster and a motivational coach and you bring people back to a new state, the same state they were in when they enrolled in the opportunity. And, you know, all you do with that conversation is ask them to just do one positive, proactive thing uh, to engage in the business again. Instead of taking steps towards quitting or resigning or procrastinating, hey, let's take one step. You know, hey, how about listen to this video or watch this video? How about attend this Zoom event? You know, how about read the four-year career again? Just do me this one favor. Just read the four-year career again, and if after reading again you still want to quit, great. Or watch this video, or like just get them to do one thing, to move them back in the direction of their dreams. I hope that helps a little bit, Alfred. Let's see. Looking for a question. New follower and thinking on finding an MLM, how to find the best one for you? Well, Ganesha, Ganesha, 
Ganesh, Ganesha. We're probably not going to have any shortage of offers after posting that on here. Because <laughs> about 10,000 people are probably going to send you theirs. How do you find the best one for you? Well, it's a good question. Uh, actually, in the four-year career, there's a whole chapter I dedicate to that. How to find the right company for you, but I'll condense it as fast as I can. Number one, if you can't passionately use and recommend that product, whether you get paid to or not, like if you're not an authentic raving fan of the product, don't even think about trying to build an empire of network marketing. You'll be disingenuous, you'll be profit motivated, and it won't work. The thing about network marketing is it's word of mouth marketing. It's one person trusting another person's word. And people don't trust salespeople who are selling for profit. Right? So why they don't trust car salespeople, right? Everybody goes shopping for a car at 10 o'clock at night on Saturday, right? There's no salespeople there. So trust is number one. Trust is your number one strategy. And, you know, people can feel that. They can feel whether your recommendation, your passion, your product story is authentic or it's a sales pitch. And if it's a sales pitch, then you need to go get a job in sales where the company will pay you to sell. And it doesn't matter if you love the product or not. Network marketing, you gotta love the product. Uh, number two is you gotta love the company. And so what is it about the company you gotta love? Well, it's philosophy. So you have to be aligned with the philosophies of the company, the values and the vision of the company, which all emanate from the owner. So like, I'm not looking, for, I haven't looked ever for a network marketing company, but you know, people bring me companies all the time and they say, hey, do you think I should join this company? What do you think about this company? And the first question I ask is, what do they sell? And, and so I think about the product is, here's how I filter the product, is will that product be relevant 50 years from now? Now, I don't know for sure if it'll be relevant 50 years from now, but for example, if the product is technology, if the product is Bitcoin or the product is, you know, some service, you know, it's not going to be relevant 50 years from now. It's going to be invented irrelevant. Now, that doesn't mean the company can't continue to recreate products and stay relevant. They can. But success leaves clues, right? So look at the companies that have been in business 30, 40, 50, 60 years. I only know one or two that are service technology companies. Everybody else sells a product. So will nutrition be relevant 50 years from now? You know, I don't know for sure, but good chance might even be more relevant, right? Will weight loss be relevant 50 years from now? I don't know, you know, maybe, you know, have an app on your phone and lose a pound every time you look at it. Who the heck knows, right? But it might, good guess, right? Good guess, weight loss might be even more relevant than it is now. So, right? product to who owns the company so that's the second question I ask who owns it and then if I really want to spend some time helping the person I'll Google the owner and I'll go deep on Google who is this person what's their history what's their competency what's their passion for network marketing and what I'm looking to assess is are they in network marketing because they love the model and they want to create something where you can build it once and get paid forever and your kids can get paid and your grandkids can get paid or are you in it to ramp something up and flip it to an investment bank or a private equity fund or sell it to another company or just make a bunch of money yourself? Now that's a judgment call, but um, that's a call you gotta make, right? Because if the owner of the company is in it for profit, for flipping it, for selling it, um, pass. Because the odds of them being in business 50 years from now are horrible. And it's a tough call to make, but those are the first two, product and ownership which ripples into philosophy, right? The people that the owner surrounds themselves with. I'm looking. Are you a speaker at Diamond Bound Virtual this week? Nope. I was a speaker a couple of years ago at the live Diamond Bound, but I am not. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Come on, fire down a question. Or you could just throw a topic. You got a topic, right? One, one. 
Oh, you probably don't like my finger in your face, but how else am I supposed to see the comments? Maybe somebody has a solution to that. Anyway, it's a beautiful day here on Lanai. A lot of crazy stuff going on in the world. Keep your head about you. Keep your wits about you. Do your best not to believe everything you read uh, and everything you see on TV. Optimism today? What's my favorite form of self-care? Self-care, fun. Easy peasy. That's an easy answer, Melanie. Fun. That's my favorite form of self-care. Fun. So, I don't know. I think it's the, uh, like, I just think it's the easiest, fastest way to, like, reconnect with your spirit child, like your authentic self, is do something as fun. And when you and I are having fun, we tend to like let go of all the mental stuff that gets us all screwed up. How do you overcome the fear of success building? Well, my, it's all in Mach 2, so. Do you recommend prospecting strangers now? Sure, I mean, like, I would like change that language. What I recommend is connecting with strangers and building a relationship with strangers and finding out if strangers, you know, are, interested in what you're doing and interested in your product so do i ever prospect a stranger like hi my name's richard do you keep your income options open no not ever why it's rude it's stupid right what would you say if somebody said that to you get away from me right i mean that's just my personal maybe i don't know maybe you like it <laughs> that's why it's different strokes right but somebody asked me stupid questions like that and they don't even know me and they just are that you know they tell me hey you know uh i know how you can make an extra 10 grand a month how do you know i even want to make 10 grand a month how do you know i don't need to make 10 grand a month how do you know i don't have 10 grand a day that i don't know what to do with you don't know anything about me because you haven't bothered to ask right and how do i know how do you know you're gonna like me and how do i know i'm gonna like you do we have anything in common do we even like talking to each other how are we going to be in business together if we don't even like each other? And I don't mean like each other like we have the same politics. or I just mean we have mutual respect. We have fun together. Like that, right? So connect with people. Build a relationship. Then, maybe. What is one of the best things you've done in your business or that you have done daily while growing? Reading. I read the first hour of every morning and I don't read like most people read. I don't sit down with a personal development book and read the personal development book. I find the personal development books, I've read all the classics multiple times and I find every other book is just a repeat of them. It's somebody's excuse to write a book and you know, it's like my book. <laughs> um, so like you said, you should read Mach 2 or Think and Grow Rich. You should read Think and Grow Rich. Napoleon Hill spent 30 years of his life interviewing 500 of the most self successful self-made men in America. And during that 30 years, he wrote Think and Grow Rich. I wrote Mach 2 in three days. Which one do you think you should read? <laughs> Hello. Best book ever. Jonathan Livingston Seagull by Richard Bach. I don't know, but that's a good one. <laughs> what three days? Oh, three days in 1994. That's when I wrote Mach 2. Now, as, uh, I, I rewrote it entirely in about three days, um, uh, two years ago. So I went into a recording studio in Australia to record Mach 2 in my voice. And I got like four pages into the reading Mach 2, which I hadn't really rewritten in a long time, years and years and years. And I'm reading the book and I'm saying to myself, wow, this is crap. This is total crap. So I canceled the recording session and went home and rewrote the book. I did the same thing with the four-year career. So they're both brand new as of two years ago. All right, gang, that's enough ranting and raving and mischief for me. Uh, have an awesome day. I'll see you tomorrow.